Hello everyone. Welcome back to yet another presentation from Hectronics India. In this video, we'll see a demo of a UPI based vending machine. So basically UPI is a payment mechanism by the government of India. So it's kind of a, like a digital payment system where you do not have to use any physical cards or such things. And basically it is tied to your phone number. So you can use your phone and the UPI associated apps to do payment to any third party. So like few days back I was watching a video by Strange Part where they built basically a ATM based slot uh, based video game. So this gave me an idea of like to create a uh, ATM based vending machine. So you already have like lot of ATM based vending machines which will uh, dispense milk or like snacks or uh, any such things so basically instead of accepting cards I decided to use the UPI mechanism so there are two parts of this mechanism the first is the payment validation and the second is the actual vending machine software so the payment val validation is done at the one central location let's call it server and the vending machines are like the nodes which are installed at different remote location which will communicate to the server so in basically uh, upi mode you basically are presented with a scan code so this barcode can be pasted on the vending machine so the customer can basically scan this barcode and can pay using any of the any of their favorite app whether like uh, google pay or like paytm or like whatsapp true caller or any of their banks apps uh, or any of their mobile e-wallet apps like free charge phone pay mobivik or any such thing so you are like not bound to a particular app so there are basically multiple ways to basically authenticate a upi payment the first is like to create a app so that will actually do a deep integration with this actual UPI pay payment apps. But I didn't like the idea because honestly like to dispense one cup of coffee, I don't want to install a separate app on my mobile. The second way is like to have a payment gateway integration. But then again, uh, there are a lot of charges involved in that and you may end up like 1% or even more paying for the upi transactions so i choose the third way which is like p2p mode where the customer can directly pay using the scan code directly to you and for p2p mode like there are no transaction charges so like once you do the transaction you will receive a sms and to whom you are sending their bank will also send them a sms based on their banks and like uh, what kind of uh, applications or like uh, banking facility they are using but typically like when the money is detected from your account you will receive a sms with the transaction reference number and when the money is credited to your account you will receive again a sms with the transaction number so the customer will re receive the transaction number on their mobile and the vendor the vending machine owner will also receive sms with the same transaction number on his mobile number so we will pass that sms using this module and can post the data to a remote server where we'll store the unique transaction reference number the virtual party address the amount and the date and time the timestamp uh, of the sms receive and whether there is any valid order associated with that so once that uh, transaction is authenticated at the end nodes the vending machine and let's say coffee is dispensed the vending machine will notify it that this transaction reference number has been successfully used and a coffee has been dispensed so you can at the server mark that this code is now no longer valid this transaction is no longer valid at any of the other vending machine so on the vending machine side we are using a ESP32, a Max 98357 audio amplifier I2S module, a TM1638 module speaker and on this server side we are using a separate antenna 
an antenna connector. So let's have a look at the actual project and see how it works. So basically there are two parts of the project. The first is receiving the bank SMS and parsing the required parameter and posting the parameters to the server. So this is a ESP32 with SIMCOM module and a 2G SIM is connected. So whenever any payment is credited to your account, the bank will send a SMS and the SMS will contain the payment amount and the UPI transaction reference number or the UTR number, unique transaction reference number, UTR. So you can pass that SMS and can post the data to your server. So your server can store that data like uh, who was the party who initiated the payment, uh, the party address, VPA, virtual private address, the UTR number and the amount. So along with these three things you can post it to the server and the server will have the timestamp of when the data is received. So I use this module instead of like uh, any other thing because uh, firstly I can like uh, do SMS passing and forwarding it to server using an Android app also but for a critical application I do not uh, want to use uh, Android phones and Android apps because you may never know like uh, when the background process is killed or like uh, when the application has crashed or like uh, when the application has went into background and um, there are a lot of other issues like I'm not too much of an Android expert but for this kind of application I want to use a dedicated embedded solution only and the reason why we talk this ESP32 GPRS module is basically of for this kind of applications only one of the good thing is like it runs from a 3.7 volt battery uh, and the battery connector also fit perfectly which we have in stock like 900 mAh battery I'm currently using and it fits perfectly so you can like completely run it on a battery and you can charge it also using a USB type C so and you can put it in a box and like this will become in itself a small uh, product kind of things the antenna I'm using a different one I'm using a more high gain antenna the one that comes with this module is by default a PCB antenna I'm using this kind of antenna which gives much better signal quality uh, here I'm getting like 22 23 something dbm and um, anything more than 5 dbm is good enough and this is like uh, out of 33 so like 22 out of 33 is good enough signal so basically what the program does it when it receives a sms it sends it to a server where it is stored along with the timestamp and all those things and why this is made as a separate thing sms parsing is because of the reason like you may have one bank account and that one bank account is linked with one phone number but you may have hundreds of vending machines so you will receive SMS only on one device but hundreds of but hundreds of vending machine can verify the payment details online from the server to which this module is posting the data now another thing is like uh, putting the sim here the bank sim here is like I miss the feature of like getting the OTP but that is not critical for me because the bank also send the uh, OTP codes when required on the email address also so most of the time I'm using like uh, my laptop only so it is more easier for me to simply copy the OTP uh, from my email rather than like going to my mobile and checking it there so that uh, reading OTP is not a critical issue for me other than that like this module perfectly solves the problem which we had like to read and pass the bank SMS and post the data to a remote server now it can work on both the things so for example when the internet is there the ESP32 can connect it to it and can post the data so like posting it via Wi-Fi is uh, typically much faster like 
and the application can post it in less than five seconds and when the internet or when the Wi-Fi is not there basically uh, it can still use GPRS and can post the data but um, because of the high uh, timeout set for the AT commands response uh, it takes around 20 to 30 seconds to process a SMS again that is not a critical thing for me because I don't expect like more than one SMS per minute so you can put this whole thing into a box and then put this uh, antenna uh, on the box uh, and you can mount this antenna on the box outer body and uh, you can power it uh, from a USB-C and this becomes say like a very compact unit kind of thing to do basically this thing so the other part of the project is basically this uh, ESP32 this speaker and this uh, I2S module so the name is Max 383578 we had already shown you a demo of the same in the previous video so basically when the customer comes and after scanning the barcode on the vending machine he does the payment and once he does the payment the customer will also receive a SMS from the bank with the transaction reference number so the transaction number is generally 12 digit but here uh, for the simplicity and for the more uh, convenience to the end customer uh, the end customer only need to enter the last six digit of that UTR number unique transaction reference number so once he enter the correct code the code is validated via the server and once the server validates and confirm that the code is correct the vending machine can dispense whatever item it wants to in this particular case we were trying to show how to dispense a coffee so the barcode is printed on the vending machine the customer will simply scan the code and pay the amount shown in that app using their favorite bank app or google pay or like paytm or whichever app like they are using now the another thing is why not use like ATM kind of things one of the reason is like that is kind of a old technology and personally I do not want to swipe my card on an unknown machine installed on a roadside or like uh, in some shopping mall or anywhere like uh, I don't trust any random machine to like just swipe my card and enter my uh, pen there that is not a safe way the other thing is like uh, coin collection like you insert the coins but coins are like typically very rare in India now uh, specifically if we talk about like uh, high value coins like 10 rupee coin is already like uh, nobody is accepting and in like low denomination like 1 rupee 2 rupee nothing comes actually these days so uh, accepting coins and all those things will not work because of the inflation and all those things and the scarcity of coins and the other things now there are machines which can accept the currency notes also but then again those are like very very complex kind of machine and it just increases the complexity and the overall cost because of the like so many different kinds of currency in, in circulation like people will have like all kinds of uh, uh, currency notes like some may be like really really old some may be like uh, completely new kind of currency note and the notes will be like soiled or something so uh, the only better way I can think of is using the UTI transaction number so the customer do not have to actually provide any detail to the vending machine he will just simply scan the code and pay the required amount via their own bank and the party the other party like the vending machine uh, will the vending machine like don't care about like what is your card detail what is your bank uh, uh, uh account number and all those things they just care about whether have i received that amount 
and what is the transaction number for that and once you enter that transaction number it will disperse the item or, or will dispense the coffee in our particular case so like this is like a one two three four five six seven eight nine zero clear and submit and this is kind of a b c d or you you may program it like uh, using your own thing like uh, to disperse cappuccino to disperse a tea or like something something so this module is basically uyf module and the reason i like it uh, from other module uh, the tm1638 other modules is because it has more number of keys and like these kind of keys can be used as like kind of keypads and calculator or any such thing whereas the other model which comes with eight keys you have like limited choice there and here you can actually take much more user input and like this ic require only three pins and even if you are like making your own product all that is required is like three uh, pull up resistor kind of thing and three like filter caps kind of thing and like nothing more just some buttons and few seven segment displays and just using three pins and like vcc ground you can control this device so this module is like typically a little harder than other the than other tm168 module because most of the code does not work online so i have to write actually my own library and uh, to use it with esp32 so like when the user press this button he will hear a message so this is the esp32 via which we are uh, controlling this please enter the six digit utr code now it will ask to enter the six digit utr code i can enter it and the code i have programmed currently is like one two three four five six i'm not checking it using a uh, web api because that's not a uh, big thing to do you can easily expand it to like just check the utr code from the web service and the web service can check uh, whether the utr code matches the codes re received in the last three minutes or in the last five minutes or in the last 10 minutes and if it matches and if it's not been used before it will say okay you are allowed to use this code and the machine will use this code and then send back uh, again one status that this code has been used and the server will mark that code as already being used so that you cannot use the same code at different different vending machines so the another security point i forgot to tell about this module is basically it uh, post message via uh, post message so that the and the other thing is like uh, during posting it uses a specific api key which will actually validate at the server that this request is coming from a proper device and the request is like http post so that the api key is not actually uh, stored anywhere in the server logs or something so that also kind of a security concern we have taken care another to do thing is like to do the data transfer on ssl but anyway like this is kind of a pretty much secure kind of thing like even on a hosted box uh, where they are logging each request the data we are sending it as via post request so that typically is not logged in general scenarios and the other thing is like even if somebody comes to know about the server url you still need to know the api key to do any meaningful post request or anything the other thing is uh, we check actually the message sender and all those details so even if you know the phone number it is not easy to craft a specific message so that it will send the payment details to the server and at the server end you can have your again second set of security concerns uh, to validate those payment details via your bank so let's say i enter some invalid code now six digit code i have to enter if i enter more than six digit it will automatically get cleared 
Now let's say I enter some six digit invalid code. Okay, so that is six digit and I press enter key. Invalid code, please try again. So it will say invalid code, please try again. And if I enter valid code. Enjoy your coffee, have a nice day. Now I can connect it to a relay and then connect that relay to a uh, water pump and can use a fl water flow sensor but that is just like bells and whistles the main crux is here how to do the processing that is less of electronics and more kind of a like a craft work uh, where i have to like create a vending machine from a cardboard and like install a water pump and water flow meter to just show you how the coffee is dispensed but uh, you get the idea here like if you enter the correct pin code enjoy your coffee have a nice day or if you enter a wrong pin code invalid code please try again and like checking it for why HTTP client the code enter to the server is not a big issue I had currently left it out and hard coded the code but it can be easily doable the main part is like the audio and the button display kind of thing and the definitely the sms processing so i hope you like this project uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day